Hi, this is Carolyn Kinane with the Contemplative Sciences Center at the University of Virginia. And this is the fifth in a series of eight videos on contemplative course design. So rather than a series of plug and play activities, what I want to offer next are some exercises for you as an instructor to work with your own strengths, your own goals, and your own contexts to develop contemplative activities and assignments that work in your particular situations. So if you have not yet at least viewed the first video, please go ahead and do that. You may notice that I switched the order of these exercises. We're going to start with cultivating dispositions first. So contemplative pedagogy balances my interest in what I think students should know and do, that is the content and the skills of my discipline, and with how they want to be, that is how they want to move through the world and how I hope for them to move through the world, that is their dispositions. So the content of your field may be equations, poetry, anatomy, and your field's skills may involve conducting experiments, writing, performing surgery, but there is also a way of being that gets ingrained in us as we learn to become literary critics or engineers or medical practitioners, research scientists, professors. Sometimes it's explicit, but oftentimes there is a hidden dispositional curriculum. And so in some fields, we can develop dispositions of suspicion of a patient's ability to know what's wrong with themselves or with a text's capacity to have meaning. We can develop intolerance for ambiguity or diversity. Let's get to the right answer as quickly as possible. We can develop habits of fear-based competition where someone else's success makes me look bad. And these are not bad ways to be sometimes. My point is just that they aren't the only way of being and that sometimes they may not be the best way to be in various circumstances. But having been trained in a particular curriculum with particular expectations, I may have overdeveloped a particular kind of disposition that now I apply to all kinds of situations. And that may not be the most appropriate disposition to bring to all situations. And so contemplative pedagogy asks instructors to bring some intention to how our assignments and how our courses are shaping students' ways of being. That is what I mean by their dispositional habits. And so what I'd like you to think about now is pause for a moment and consider five years out, what do I hope for students? What do I hope for them to be like? How do I wish for students to be with themselves, one another, ideas and experiences? Here, think about um, the word character is a little problematic. Maybe think about attitudes or ways of being. I wish for students to be curious, to be brave, to be collaborative, to be inquisitive, to be generous, kind of along those lines. Um, you may hit pause and do a little brainstorming around this. And then the next piece is, what am I currently doing in my courses to help develop these dispositions in students? So this takes us back to our second video in this series where we are bringing some awareness and some inquiry to what we're doing in our classes. What are the dispositions you hope to cultivate and where might that be happening in your classes? Next video comes on to making process visible. Thanks for your time.